Right, good morning. I'm not sat down, I'm just gonna sit down. Sit down, sit down. Right, sit down. Right, hang on. Oh, what a nightmare this morning, you don't wanna know. Right, you may have seen this work, well you will have seen this. Follow my blog, you'll be sick of the sight of it. And if you're following my YouTube channel, I've been uploading videos about this for da -da 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 forever, but and it's a slow one, it's gonna take a long time. Now, time consuming means it doesn't matter to me, I just, it just doesn't even figure because everything I do stitch wise is a labour of love. If it takes time, it takes time. I'm not going anywhere, this isn't going anywhere. It might be that I stop working on this at some point and do something else, but I will always come back to this. So, I basically have, for those of you who've never seen this before, <laughs> well, good, well, well, good to you, where have you been in the cupboard? Anyway, there's 10 squares of white fabric with seven inches marked off and within the seven inches is an embroidery okay and then when they're finished my plan is to edge them all with patchwork i've only done two and um, like i say i've got 10 and there's nothing to say when i finish this one that i won't start another one who knows um 72 one inch squares to edge each one so time consuming yes but absolutely not a problem at all not for me and um, so what i wanted to say was most of these squares are completely covered in embroidery, not a lot of white space. Apart from this one, I haven't decided what to do with this one yet. I think I will. I'm compelled, really, to dot things in here, just because that's how I roll. Um, so I'll go back to that one in a minute. But you can see these ones are fully embellished. They don't all have, all have things dotted in them, but for example, this one... It's full, it doesn't need anything. It tells me it doesn't need anything. Um, this one, again, doesn't need anything because it's got a run of lace and it's got a little lace edge here in the corner. Um, this one's got French knots and sequins dotted about. This one's got web stitches dotted about, okay. And this one hasn't got anything dotted about, which is fine, it's fine, it's staying as it is. So there's literally just that one I showed you first which is that one and the one I'm going to work on now. So what I've been doing with this one, I've been doing little eyelets in the spaces. Okay. So I'll pull in in a minute when I start sewing, don't worry. But basically little eyelets dotted all over tiny little things and web stitches. Okay. Um, and the pink dots are where I need to put the eyelets. All right. And I've still got one, two, three, four, five, six, seven. I'm going to sneeze. <coughs> oh, excuse me. <coughs> seven eyelets to do. I don't know about the web stitches. I'll assess that as I go along. So let me just, I'm going to stand up to do Maybe not, hang on. Um, no way. Right. So hopefully, can you see the eyelets? Yeah, I think you can, because I can see them in the viewer thing. So I'll do an eyelet with you. Oh. That's made me all congested, that sneeze. So in a hoop, always in a hoop, nearly always in a hoop, a stiletto, which is used a lot in gold work. So make your hole with that, pierce your fabric with that. Okay, now for me, that isn't big enough to work on for an aisle. It would just disappear when I started stitching around it. So I've got an old pair of thread scissors here, embroidery scissors. So I'll make it bigger with those, push it in. Okay, now I almost exclusively use cotton embroider thread. Um, number 16 is my favourite. I use that most, but you can also get, so 16 isn't, it's not thick, but it's the thickness I like. The higher the number, the thinner the thread. And this is cotton embroider 25, so it's quite thin. It's very thin, actually. Cotton embroider is a single stranded cotton thread. Very, very soft. It's beautiful to work with. Um, so this is number 25 because I need a fine thread because these are so small okay and I don't want them to disappear with thick thread thick thread would fill that hole wouldn't it now if I'm ever doing anything with a hole I never start at the edge because I don't want in the future my knot to peep through the hole so I always start a little bit away from where I'm stitching with my knot on the top of my work okay so that's there the knot and then literally for these eyelets, I'm just buttonholing around. Now I say it all the time, I'm just buttonholing around this hole to define it. 
and basically to stop it fraying as well. Now I say it all the time and it's true, if I wasn't doing this on camera, it would take me half the time. Every time I do something on camera, it takes me longer. Um, it's because I know you're all watching me. Now I'm going to do this one and then I'm going to see if maybe I should pull in a little bit more. The danger with pulling in a little bit more though with me is I get carried away and forget what I'm doing and I move the work out of your eye line. But I will do my best not to do that. That's a lot. Where are we? Where are we? <laughs> there. Right. So I'm looking in the viewer when I'm doing that. So just buttonhole around it, tiny little buttonhole stitches with this lovely fine thread. Now then I've been edging them with chain stitch and I'm not sure that was the best choice because it's a bit heavy. Um, but I'm going to stick with it because this is going to be a sample book and we learn. So in six months a year if I come back to look at this work I'll think oh that chain stitch is a bit heavy there. And I probably remember this conversation and I'll just edge it with running stitch or something. Um, it's all about learning. That's what sampling's for, isn't it? So I'll go all the way around with buttonhole stitch. Now it does kind of fill the hole a little bit. The hole becomes less visible the more stitching you do, obviously. Um, but I like to do, I'll show you in a minute. What I like to do, although it doesn't, I'll explain in a minute. So that's my last buttonhole stitch, right? So what I did with these last night, the ones I've already done, is I pushed my stiletto through to allow them to stand a bit proud, and they did, and I liked it, but it didn't stay like that. It sunk back into the fabric, but never mind. So go down to the back, and then this little tail you've got here, I just overstitch it a couple of times with my working thread. Uh, like that and then I can cut that off now and then I can take the knot off from the front okay so that's gone completely out of the way and there's no chance in the future of that appearing in that hole and then I'll use this thread that I've still got attached to the needle to go around with chain stitch okay where are I there we are so doesn't help if it gets caught on the back. So we just go around. Uh -uh. So like I say, I do think now that I've done some of these that this chain stitch is too heavy. Um, but because it's all done with one run of thread, it would be very difficult to unpick the chain stitch without it affecting the eyelets. And like I say, it doesn't bother me because this is just for me and it's a learning exercise. And wouldn't you think I'd have learned by now all the years I've been embroidering? But you never stop learning. Never. Constantly learning. Which is a good thing. That's what sampling's all about. This, by the way, I love this bought these are ready made but they're really nice they have little tags anyway can't claim credit for that so like I said if I wasn't my thread's twisted just let me untwist my thread if I wasn't doing this on camera I'd have finished it by now so go around <laughs> honestly patience of a saint Karen patience of a saint there and then I just go down into the first web uh, first buttonhole stitch you pull it through to the back like that so there it's finished and then to fasten it off I don't knot it because again it's the knot situation in the future isn't it so I just thread it through the back a couple of times to secure it and then cut it off. Now the thing is as well, if this was a garment or a bag or something that was going to get heavy use, then that might not be enough to secure that thread. But because it's a sample and it's going to be sitting in a book uh, and it's not going to be overly handled, then fastening it off like that is perfectly acceptable. Right, so now I need to do a web stitch. 
So for the web stitch, I'm using Cotton Abroad 16 and I'm using a blunt needle. Now, if you can pierce your fabric with a blunt needle to make the initial legs for this stitch, then I would recommend you do that. But if you can't, then start with a sharp needle and swap at the point I'm gonna tell you to swap, okay? So if I do a web stitch, let's say here, I have it marked out for web stitches, right? So you're making an eight legged, almost star shaped, and in they need to be even, okay? Now I never measure this, but I mean, I've done thousands of these and it just comes naturally. So it's practice, practice, practice. And actually that isn't as even as it could be. Um, so you're making eight legs, okay? With your sharp needle, if you can't pierce your fabric with a blunt needle, then you come up in the center from the back there. And then you wrap, just put your needle underneath. Don't pierce the fabric, just put your needle under the legs and pull it like that to secure them together, okay? Now I'm gonna try and pull in a bit more for this because it is a bit complicated, this. But I just don't wanna get out of the run of the camera. Right, we're there. Stay there, Karen, don't move. So what you're gonna do now is you're gonna go back over the one on the right and under it and then bring the needle up on the left of the one on the left like that ready so you're wrapping that one on the right and now you're ready to that one's now on the right again you wrap it and go under the next one and you just wrap in all the way around and i would advocate and this is where you would change your needle because you don't want to be wrapping these legs with a sharp needle with a, a potential to split your threads because the point of the needle is sharp. So I would always, always do it with a blunt needle, okay? Um, and you're just gonna do that round and round and round till all these legs are full. And I would recommend having enough thread on your needle to do the whole thing. And there's no way, mathematical way, that I can tell you to do that. Again, you'll just get to know. Try and keep your tension even so that some of them some of the legs don't look less, uh, well, actually, if you don't keep your tension even, you might get a little lump on one of the legs is what I'm trying to say. And the other thing is you can stop there. That's quite a nice little stitch. We're just the wrapping partially wrapped, isn't it? So it's up to you, but I keep going and I keep wrapping until I can't wrap anymore. And you can tell that because it gets tighter and tighter to wrap, okay? Um, as you're going around. Now I'm trying very hard not to move my hoop round. Move my hand instead of my hoop because I don't want to move this out of your vision. Because believe me, I'm renowned for that. Somebody once said to me, put a bit of tape on the table where you need to be with your work. Um, I thought, oh yeah, it's a great idea. Put a cross of tape. Didn't work. Okay, because I lose myself, especially when I'm doing this. It's so relaxing. Well, not when I'm doing it on camera, but in, if I'm sitting, <coughs> excuse me, if I'm sitting on the sofa doing these, then I lose myself. So, and occasionally I lose myself on camera and I forget about the tape and I end up three foot away from the tape and it just, all it needs is concentration from me. And I have to keep reminding myself, look at your viewer, Karen, can people see what's happening? So we just keep going round and round and round until the legs don't want to take any more. And this is actually a little bit bigger than the others. <coughs> a tiny bit bigger, not a massive leg. But you can see those legs filling up. So you're going back over the one on the right and under it to wrap it and coming up ready to wrap the next one. Sorry, I've had the cold for nearly three weeks. It's ridiculous. My husband's got it now as well, which I suppose is inevitable. I got it off my grandson's from nursery. He came over from nursery with it. Super spreader. Oh, now we've got a knot. There you are. Just keep going. Let me just check that viewer again. Yeah, you're there. This is actually taking longer than I imagined because I made it a little bit too big, but never mind. Mounds are freezing, that doesn't help. Right, 
round and round and round and round. Oh, see, you couldn't see it then, could you? <coughs> Karen, get a grip. I think I need some sort of cough medicine or something. Right, keep going, keep going. I'm almost running out of thread. Where am I? Wrap it, wrap it, wrap it. Now I'm going to call it a day there. It's not as tightly wrapped perhaps as it could be, but it's still acceptable. But you will feel it gets not very hard, but you feel it tightening as you're wrapping. So you'll know. You'll know when you're there. We all know our own tensions. And there I'm So I'll just, I'll just do a few more. I'm reluctant to stop because... And again, I don't want to run out of thread. See, these two are getting tight. There, anyway. So, I've come up on the left of that spoke. Okay. So, I'll just go back over to the right of that one and take it through to the back to finish it. Where is it? There. And I just do a Henrietta knot, so called, because Henrietta can't do them, to fasten that off. Okay, so that's web stitches and eyelets. Um, da -da -da -da. Web stitch eyelets. I just want to poke that again um, to see this one. See if you poke it more visible but then it relaxes back into itself it doesn't stay like that but never mind never mind we'll live and learn 